What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Disgaea 7. In this video, I am going to teach you everything there is to know about properties, a new feature added in Disgaea 7. So, first of all, what are properties? Well, properties are essentially a little bit like innocence, okay? They come on all items along with along with innocence. Some of them, you know, are going to be kind of useless, just like healing item ones. And they can range anywhere from, you know, getting one property, two properties, three properties, all the way up to getting, you know, a good five or six. It just depends on the look of the draw. However, don't worry, you can also get a lot more of these properties as well. Because they do actually provide some incredibly, incredibly good features. So, what sort of things can you expect from properties? Well, some items do actually have innate effects, and also some effects only spawn on specific items without going through item reincarnation. So what I mean by that is if we take a look at staffs, as you can see, the first property is always the same. This is basically just increasing the range and magic range, okay? So anyone equipped with this staff would have increased magic range. Now, along with that, you also have stuff like axes, which lower the defense of enemies that you hit with them. Now, not every axe will, will have this, of course, but most of them will. And then, same with guns, you know, it is essentially just uh, extra accuracy and, and things like that. Now, along with those base effects, you can also get some other stuff. So, for example, if we take a look at muscle items really quick, muscle items themselves are focused around a few things. So, the very first one is it increases your HP by 5%. That is pretty standard across all of the muscle items. However, you can get other things as well. For example, on muscle items, you are more likely to get properties which will actually raise your weapon and status resistances. So what this means is when you equip that, you would take less damage from a specific weapon type. We have a really good feature on glasses items, however, which as you can see, I do have some actually locked here. And that is that glasses items can start with the ability to give you extra class EXP. So this right here is an extra 5% class efficiency EXP. And then this one is an extra 15%. There is also an extra 10%, which is just the plus version. However, I don't know if there is a legendary version of this property, which is even higher. The legendary effects are these ones right here, which are essentially golden. I believe these ones are the highest tier skill you can get. However, I've not come across any for class experience. Another base effect for glasses that you can come across is a way to increase your attack range. So that one right there is an extra one attack range. This again is pretty bog standard for glasses. And then we have orbs, which increase your mana gain and your it uh, so your elemental resistance. So if you're farming mana or you want to improve, you know, your fire resistance or your water resistance, orbs are a really, really good way to go about that. We also have movement items like the veneer, froster, and that. These ones are actually really, really good because these provide extra skill experience as well. Then we have belts, which give extra HL and damage percentage. So if you want to farm HL, chances are you're going to be running three belts equipped on a character. And then when it comes to emblems, so, you know, trapezidans, arcadias, exodius, and so on and so forth, these will actually have an innate EXP boost effect. So, well, what I mean by that is, let me just try and find it. Uh, okay, so, uh, right here. No, that's not the one. Testament. Okay, so this testament right here gives me an extra 25% experience. Okay. Now, the extra experience I have actually only found on the emblem items themselves. However, I believe via reincarnation, you probably could spread these to other items as well. What you would probably have to do is you would probably have to start off with an emblem and then get the experience skills on it and then turn it into a different item such as a weapon or something along those lines. However, I have not tested item reincarnation enough 
to fully understand how that process works because I can't understand Japanese. So there is, there is a limit to what Google Translate can unfortunately help me with. Okay, so we've gone over the base properties. We've gone over what items can have base uh, on their base. What about via item reincarnation where we can get extra properties? Well, if we just very quickly load up item reincarnation right now, as you can see, this Arcadia has a lot of properties. That is because I've reincarnated it a bunch of times. So right here, we have extra ability by 3%. So this just gives me 3% extra stats across the board. This is attack 15% growth. So this is essentially like an attack growth evil T. However, this can be combined with the attack growth evil teas themselves so you can whack all five evil tea growths on and then use this as well for even more attack gain again this is five percent i'm not quite sure what this one is i can't remember off the top of my head i think it's along the lines of six percent extra damage dealt uh, we've got four percent we've got four percent again we've got extra hit growth and then we've got 10 percent of something else that i i don't know i look my i don't have my phone handy at the minute so i can't just whack google translate on unfortunately so the reason we have so many properties on that is because I have reincarnated it. So right here, as you can see, when we go to reincarnate an item, it will give us an extra ability to choose from. So right now, okay, we have the extra speed ability, which I do not have on this Arcadia. Likewise, if we do the same there, it is going to be the same because these items are duplicated. These are duped items, so that is why they are the same. However, if we go to this Exodius right here, as you can see, we could get extra 15% SP growth, or we could turn it into a monster weapon. And this would essentially just give us an extra 5% damage on attack, along with these effects that I already have as well. What this means is you could essentially create fully specialized equipment. You could create equipment that is solely designed around debuffing enemies, around buffing EXP, and so on and so forth. One of the things I will note, however, is when it comes to Innocence from previous Desigai titles, so things like Broker for increasing HL gain, Statistician for increasing EXP, um, Aeronaut for increasing Wind Resistance, and so on and so forth, they are no longer in the game. You can no longer get them as an Innocent. Innocents now are exclusively the Stat Innocent. So this is going to be you know, um, HP, SP, attack, defense, intelligence, resistance, hit, and speed. Those are the only innocents you can get now. Instead, the ones that increase your weapon resistance, your status resistance, your elemental resistance, and of course, you know, the uh, HL buff, the EXP buff, class proficiency, skill, weapon, and so on and so forth, they are now relegated to properties instead. So if you want to create a perfect character that has, you know, all of your um, all of your defenses maxed out, you know, you've got resistance to every weapon type, you are fully resistant to all elements and so on and so forth, you are going to have to do it via properties. Again, though, I don't know how difficult that will actually be as I don't speak Japanese, I'm afraid. If somebody who is fluent in J uh, Japanese could drop a comment down below and just give me a little more detail on that, that would be truly, truly fantastic. For now, however, I think that does pretty much cover everything there is to know about properties. However, if you think I've missed something in this video, drop a comment down below and just ask a question and I'll be sure to answer you as soon as I can. As always, though, everybody, I do hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it has helped. If it has, then please be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And of course, if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. I'm going to be making a ton more videos for the Japanese version of Disguise 7. And of course, I will also be remaking them for the English version as well when that releases, just to cover any changes that happen via updates. As always, though, everybody, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.